Hi, so what I'm going to go through here is the installation of Grafana on IIS from scratch. So it will not actually be on IIS, but it will go through IIS. Grafana actually runs as a Windows service. So what we're going to do is actually redirect the traffic through IIS into the Windows service that runs HTTP. So let's get started here. So I have broken out the instructions into two parts, preparation and installing Grafana. So let's go through the preparation and make sure we get the basics right, which is actually getting the particular software. So what I'm gonna do here is show you, we're gonna get three pieces of software, which is the URL rewrite and the application request routing. So let's go through the URL rewrite and I will have these links in the description area of the video. Now, if you look at the a URL rewrite. Normally you can just install the extension through IIS with the platform installer. So you can install it through here or what I like to do is simply download it and if people do not have the web installer, um, I'll show you how to download it here. I will have all of these links in the description area. So if you scroll all the way down, the one I've chosen is the x64 installer. Now for the application request here, routing, which is a, a reverse proxy. Also, I will have the link in the description area and in the bottom here, I've downloaded this install and I have all three here. The Grafana, I've downloaded the Grafana Enterprise. And so I am going to start installing this and showing you the configuration later in IIS. Now, um, the other thing you want to do is actually perform the configuration of the IIS website. So you notice here I created a IIS website here and the binding is to the URL grafana.codecowboy.org and I also have my third step here which is in my demo I am configuring this to uh, be basically in the host file and you will also want to have this entry in your host file and I'll go through the reasonings for that later. Now um, just make sure you have all three of those things and I will go ahead now and install the software. Now what I won't do is go through the creation of the IS website. If you don't have that understanding, um, you know, definitely look at my other videos. I will have a link in the instructions on how to create IES websites, the three different ways to do so. Now, uh, just going through the Grafana here, I will be installing the URL rewrite. So the application request routing depends on URL rewrite. So I will install that first. And it's a simple install. There's no real choices here. You see it's installing and it's done for the URL rewrite. Now this is for the application request routing, except the licensing and it installs. And right there it is done. And so the third thing I will do is actually install Grafana itself. Now uh, just going through the URL rewrite and also the application request routing within IES, let me close out IES manager here, open it back up and the options will actually appear. So you will see that the application request routing is actually at the IS server level, while the request routing is actually at the website level. So you'll see here URL rewrite at the website level and the ARR is actually on the server, IS server level. So let me go ahead and install Grafana here and show you that it is you know fairly straightforward I am just going to go with the defaults and after installs what I'm going to do is go into the services and actually stop that service because uh, it's going to be running on port 80 and I don't want it to be running on port 80 because my IES is running on port 80 itself so I don't want it interfering with my IES, which is the whole point of all of this is I will have other websites, for example, on the server and I don't want Grafana interfering with those particular servers. So right now it is installing and while it's installing, I will um, 
you know, just talk about the next steps here. So actually it's done installing. I'm gonna click finish and I'm gonna bring up the services, the Windows services, and I am gonna stop that Grafana service. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the G's and you can see it's Grafana there, it's running now. I am gonna stop that service and I'll restart it after I've configured Grafana. So um, the next steps is to configure ARR. So I'm gonna go into my IES manager, highlight the root of the ser IES server, click here on the application request routing, and I am gonna choose server proxy settings. I'm gonna click on enable proxy, and I'm gonna keep all of these defaults. So when you do this and when you activate this, this will not affect and should not affect your other uh, websites that you're serving out. So that's the whole point is that it doesn't affect the other servers that you're uh, running on this particular website. Now I'm also gonna go to this Grafana, Grafana website here and I'm gonna go to URL rewrite and I am gonna add a new rule. So I'm gonna click on add a new rule and I'm gonna choose blank rule here. So I'm gonna double click on the blank rule and I am going to name it uh, Grafana inbound, Grafana inbound rule. And once again, this rule is only active particular to that particular website and I am going to cut and paste this pattern here. Now, the reason why I have the word Grafana here is because I will have a subdirectory that is named Grafana. So this will redirect all of the traffic that has the Grafana here into this particular right here, rewrite URL. So the rewrite URL, I'm gonna copy and paste this, will be what I have in my DNS. So I, I will be pointing this in my DNS. Right now I have it on the host file, but I will also be putting this entry into the DNS as well as putting this 127.0.0 within my host file. In terms of the demo, I will not be showing the DNS, simply that I will be showing the uh, just the local host, but it will be similar or as, as with any website when you're configuring it in the DNS. So this is what I will be redirecting to. So that Windows service, I will be configuring it to be running on port 8888, <laughs> uh, 8888. Now, uh, the other thing I wanna do is make sure that a pen query string is chosen here and to stop any processing of subsequent rules. Now, you might not want that if you have additional rules, but in my demo, that's what I will be using. And now I'm gonna click apply. And now I am going to go configure the Grafana. So Grafana is configured within program files. So if I go into program files. So the, the other thing I wanted to note here, um, before I go into configuring Grafana is configuring the host file. So the host file itself will be in C colon system32, drivers, and Etsy. So just keep that in mind. It will be here. And so I have this opened up in my notepad plus plus right here. So going back to the Grafana configuration, that is in program files on the Grafana labs, Grafana, C-O-N-F, conf for configuration. And you will wanna copy the sample, copy it and rename it custom. So now this will be the initialization file for the Windows service. And you'll notice it is all scrambled up in Notepad. So I'm gonna open up in Notepad++ and it is nicely formatted. Let me expand this out here. 
and also put a note here that the file itself is in this particular directory. Now going to WordPad or um, Notepad++, I'm going to scroll all the way down here and uncomment this. So I will have the protocols as HTTP and this particular port will be running on 888 and the domain itself will be running as Grafana. So if I switch over to my host, Grafana, right here. Now, the other thing I want to mention is where the Grafana database is. So by default, the Grafana database runs as SQLite. So if I uncomment this, SQLite is a file-based database. So I will be talking a little bit about the load balance scenarios here. So the Grafana database will be located under the data in Grafana directory. So let me show you where that is. So every time I put in a, it's right there. So every time I put in a query or I put in a data set or I configure a dashboard, it is going to go into this database by default. Now you could use MySQL, which is a more concurrent database or Postgres, but these are the three choices here. So I am going to save this here. Now, if I scroll down, you, there's other choices you could play around with as far as data sources and um, the SMTP and stuff like that. that you can explore on your own. I will not go through that. Most of what I will go through is just the basics of how to get Grafana up within IIS or um, through IIS. So right here, uh, let me go ahead and also go through here. You will notice there is a Grafana subdirectory. So I am also going to comment this out because I am also using a reverse proxy here. So I'm going to uncomment this out and also here where I'm using a subpath, which I named Grafana. Now this matches the uh, matching pattern that I have in the URL rewrite. So I am going to have true here. I'm going to save this. So I have everything set up. You'll see I uncommented out the protocol the HTTP port, the domain, and also the root URL pattern and the subpath. And I've uncommented out SQLite. Now you might want to configure this to another database here, but uh, those are the basics. Now I could start up Grafana. So I'm going to go into the Windows services and I am going to start this up and you'll notice it starts up I'm going to go into my browser here now prior this was not set up so when I do Grafana it actually doesn't go anywhere now I am going to do Grafana here which is the URL that I did have and now Grafana is set up the default super admin here is simply admin admin. You log in and you'll notice it's logged in. It wants me to reset into to a new password. So I am going to put in a very strong password here. Namely admin123 <laughs> and uh, click submit and now I'm in. So it is completely set up. I do want to show you where everything is and explain to you certain things that were not obvious. So um, for example, you want to create other users here. So if I go into the shield, this shield is where you actually administer users for the uh, web Grafana website here that you have. So, so this so this area allows you to add a admin user or just a read-only, view-only user. 
So this is where you would do that. You could also set up organizations. Right now, by default, it has the main org. You could set up organizations where different dashboards and users would be associated to that particular uh, user. So here is just uh, settings and information. Uh, plugins, you can manage plugins. There's a bunch of them. Um, now, the other aspect is the data sources. So if I go into settings here, configuration, you'll see there's the data sources. And there's a bunch of data sources. Because you're doing IES, likely you will be interested in the Microsoft SQL Server right here. And it's very standard. And then there's also the dashboards. So one thing you want to do here is when you're creating a dashboard, if I go home, as far as the browsing of the dashboards, you could create folders under the dashboard. So here I could have main website create. Then I could create a dashboard under that particular folder so I could have many folders and organize it better. So when I create dashboards, I could create panels under the dashboard. So I will go through all of those little things on how to create particular dashboards in other videos. But right now, I just want to focus more on the IS. So I do want to talk briefly about the load balance scenario. So here I am in IS, and normally in a load balance scenario, I will have two of these IS servers running on different servers. And everything is set up exactly, exactly the same. Now the problem with Grafana is that it only supports those three particular um, databases. So everything is load balanced as far as the traffic that comes through IES. But when it gets to the database, all of the configurations that you've saved and all of the dashboards goes into that one uh, database. So if you're using SQL, if, if you're using MySQL or if you're using Postgres, that's all fine and good because those are uh, concurrent multi-user databases. But if you are using SQLite, uh, that is a file database. And the problem with that file database is that um, that database can only be locked by one process at a time. So in within the configuration file, uh, so you'll notice here in the configuration file, if I go to databases here, it will have an area for the path. Now, a UNC path does not work on this. So if you uncomment this out and you put in a UNC path, uh, it won't work. And the reason why it won't work is because it only allows one process to lock that particular database file at a time. So the Windows service will not even start on that secondary server. So if you are using SQLite, there is really no true load balancing. What you would do is in your host file, so what you would do in your host file is actually point this to the primary IS server instead for your um, redirection. Uh, unfortunately, that is not actually a load balance scenario, but it does act as a backup. The only true load balance scenario would be if you pointed this particular uh, database in the config file to a shared uh, MySQL or Postgres database. So that is uh, my comment on basically the load balance scenarios. So there you go. Now you have Grafana running on IES. And please, please, please subscribe to my channel and support this channel by liking this video. And I hope this helps and uh, send me any questions that you may have. And uh, have a great day.